Mr. Erickson, we're here today for the uh, unveil of something many IndyCar fans, I think many racing fans have wanted to see. Tell me about Honda's choice to manufacture an aero kit. Seems like another great engineering challenge for you all. Yeah, I think it's a, a neat step for us in our long and storied IndyCar history to be able to now take on the chassis side of things uh, in, in a very comprehensive way. Uh, it's building on our success from years past in building racing chassis and competing. And so it was kind of a natural fit, given what we've done in the past, to be able to take this on and uh, show what we can do. Tell me about taking on aerodynamics. That's a big part of road car development, but not something we've really seen in IndyCar. Yeah, we've, you know, we've dabbled in aerodynamics on the IndyCar over the years, but typically the rules only allowed you know, very small and subtle changes, you know, a, a tire ramp here, a wing end plate there. And now what we're getting into is, a, is an era where we have unprecedented uh, op options and possibilities, and that's that's very exciting for us. We're building on, uh, you know, working with in the prototype world with prototype sports cars. Those have all kinds of aerodynamic elements on them, and so the learning that took place there is very appropriate to this as well. In terms of size of the task. Uh, Give me a general idea of the amount of people, the amount of hours to produce this aero kit. Uh, it certainly wasn't one guy in a back office. No, definitely not. I mean, it's it's a enormous undertaking, and uh, we've never had so many aerodynamicists <laughs> working on a project before. Um, and and it's and it's a project that's not only people, but also the un, uh, fundamental infrastructure underneath it. You know, you need a lot of computing power, you need a lot of software, you need a lot of on-track testing, and it's been a big project. But we're pretty excited excited about how it's come out and to be honest we looked at this like you know this is our chance to shine and we put every effort to make this the very best we could and so I, I look back on what we did and I don't have any regrets that we didn't put out every effort possible to make the best aero kit. For those who've seen the aero kit uh, images published by your competitor, uh, the, the Honda aero kit, it's hard to uh, hard to miss. Yeah, it's been an interesting process. You know, we we do have two competitors with very uh, well different engines. Even though the specs would suggest that they might be very similar, there are different aspects of it. So one of the things that we were able to do is tailor the kit to match our engines' characteristics specifically. And I feel that uh, our engines' characteristics lend themselves to very good aerodynamics uh, because of uh, the, the, the cooling effects of our engine, etc. And you know, the the kit itself comes out of a, maybe a different background than our competition. Uh, there are a lot of similarities in the way that this, this current Indy car is a bit like a half of an open wheel car and half of a sports car in some ways. And so if you look at some of the effects of you know, closing in a, a rear wheel, for example, as they do on the Indy cars currently for safety, uh, we already had experience there. So that might have led us down a different aerodynamic path than the other aero kit. How has this aero kit project helped Honda Performance Development to grow, either whether it be in personnel, uh, but also just knowledge base? Seems like something where you're exploring some of the unknown. I imagine a lot has come back to your knowledge base. It really has helped. It, you know, it's if I look back over our 22-year history now, you can see very clearly steps in the process where we tried something new and we learned a bunch out of it, and it really helped us in future programs, and that's happened again and again, and this Aero Kit is no different. Uh, it's allowed our associates to do some things that they hadn't done before in an IndyCar, uh, to try some techniques perhaps that we hadn't used before, uh, to do uh, a level of testing that's different than we've done in the past, and that combination I think has really helped us with learning you know, some skills that'll be with us for the next series or the next uh, venue that we add to our IndyCar portfolio. So we've seen the aero kit revealed. You guys have also been very busy on what sits beneath that aero kit. I don't want uh, us to forget that there's been a lot of effort put into making your uh, IndyCar engine more powerful, more everything. How has that effort complemented what you've been doing with the aero kit? It's been an equally heroic effort on the part of our associates. We uh, have spent this long off season uh, developing our engine. Uh, it, it, maybe not everybody knows, but the aero kit change also allowed us to develop some aspects of the uh, connecting pipes and, and, and exhaust and things external to the engine 
that we weren't necessarily allowed to develop before. So we focused on not only the engine, but all the other bits and pieces. And uh, you know, I'm really, really proud of what we've come up with. Uh, we, we dragged everybody and their brother and sister <laughs> onto the project to make as much progress over the off season as we could. And I'm, I'm really pleased with what, with what we've been able to achieve. It's fantastic. The aero kit rules also changed as well. There was one set of rules that everyone built towards, and there was a bit of a, I guess, a late uh, modification there as well. How much of a, a rework or a remix per se was required to uh, come up with the final, final uh, regulation set? It was uh, a bit of uh, moving goalposts to say the least, but that I think plays to our strengths because we can do pretty rapid development and you know as changes were made for safety which we fully support, you know you have to now look at the car in a different way and try to to optimize what the new baseline is. And for us, I think that's, what, again, something that we're good at. We're able to respond to changes quickly. And uh, I think what we've come up with is, is looks pretty sharp. Knowing that, at least in the road course and a short oval trim, we've certainly added downforce. I know that you've added horsepower as well. But I think to those who understand aerodynamics, if you add downforce, in theory, you'd be slowing the package down, at least in a straight line. Mm -hmm. How do you manage the trade-offs of, we've, imp we've now been able to improve our cornering speed, but have we lost anything on the straight? How do you manage that? Well, we go back on our experience. So, you know, if you think back to um, the, the wins that we've achieved in classes at the 24 Hours Le Mans, that track is about drag reduction. That's a big focus of that. And when you look at the Indy 500, it's about drag reduction. And so we're taking the learnings that we had from that of how to balance drag, downforce, fuel economy, engine characteristics, and directly applied those to the Indy car. Now, with the Honda Aero Kit, <laughs> You can actually brand the vehicle appropriately because it's wearing your own bodywork, has your engine. Yeah, I think that's it's a, a great source of pride because now the car will be called a Honda, and not only a Honda engine but the car itself a Honda. Uh, we we put in, in the renderings, you'll see we've got the H mark that's filled in in red, which is the sign of a Honda uh, chassis and, and also used in the Type R cars of, of lore. And so it's it's it was quite pleasing to be able to apply that and say, yep, this is ours. Of the many things that uh, you've, Honda's added to their engineering resources, your uh, simulation, driver simulation, the driver in the loop uh, system in Brownsburg, Indiana, I would imagine that and having your drivers in that has helped in the uh, development of this kit. It has indeed, because, because you're operating in a virtual world, you can try concepts in a way that you haven't even designed the parts yet. You can say, what if the car had this characteristic? What would it what would it do and how, what advantages would it offer over the things we already know? And we, we actually did that and it was very exciting to see the circle, the complete circle happen where you know, it starts with an idea, let's, let's try this, let's try it out. So you do it in the simulator and it's like, yeah, that might have some promise. Great, how are we going to do that? How are we going to make the car have that characteristic? Then the creativity starts of how to configure the aero components to do that. Then, next step, okay, now I, I think I've got it. You got to go test it, and getting it out on track and seeing, you know, the same driver that tested that in the virtual world now have a chance to try it in the real world and having it match what they saw in the simulator is is thrilling. Actually, it's an amazing confirmation of this process. So the folks at HPD are known for being racers. When you're in Brownsburg, do you ever sneak over the facility at night, flip on the lights and such, and do some simulation of your own? Be honest, Steve. I have been in the simulator once. And I got the chance to try the Indy 500 uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway circuit. And I was not prepared for it. So I got into it. I was wearing business clothes. And I got out of it absolutely drenched in sweat. Uh, it's, it's interesting because the qualifying, they, they gave me a racing configuration, which is obviously more downforce. And that was OK. But when I got to the qualifying setup that, that the real pros like Ryan Hunter Ray and others use, it was into the wall, you know, just straight away. So that happens a few times and you start pouring sweat, even though you haven't physically been damaged. The livery that's being used on the, uh, the demonstration, or the, I guess the initial livery, mirrors another one within the Honda family. I found, found that to be quite an interesting decision, plus a great nod as well. Yeah, we, you know, we've noticed that our uh, brethren at Honda Jet have been creating a linkage between racing and 
this high-speed aerodynamic device called a jet. <laughs> and so we, we, we recognized that and I thought that was kind of fun and we thought maybe we'd return the, the favor and, and do a similar thing with the paint scheme that we came up with. So the, the paint scheme that, that's on these uh, images is uh, reminiscent of the FAA-conforming jet trial that, that Honda had and, and a, kind of a nice nod to those guys and shows that, you know, Honda makes jets too. <laughs>